continuing the book of Ibn Qayyim, The Disease and the Cure, and we're on the chapter of words, the danger of words, and here are some principles that we have taken from that book. Number one, only speak that will benefit you in your relationship with Allah. If there's no benefit, then stop. If there is a benefit, think that by speaking those words, will you miss out on a greater benefit. Is there something else that you could be saying for a greater benefit? So always be careful. Number two, if you cannot bring happiness, by your words, don't bring sadness. If you can't bring benefit, don't bring harm, right? And these are general principles. And now we have hadith, the sayings of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. One of them is the one that is reported by Abu Huraira radiallahu an, in which he said that the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was asked about the deed which will be foremost to lead a man to Jannah. Okay, now this is about an action that will be most important, that will be foremost in taking someone to Jannah, which is the eternal destination for happiness and should be our own goal for everyone, right? And this is what the Messenger of Allah وسلم, replied, fear of Allah and the good conduct. Then he was asked about indulgence, which will admit a man to hellfire, right? So regarding what will admit a man to hellfire, he وسلم, said, the tongue and the genitals, right? So look at these two muscles in the body, two, these two parts of the body, and how important they are to be protected. And in Sahih Bukhari, we have a narration from the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, in which the Prophet said, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, a slave of Allah may utter a word which pleases Allah without giving it much importance. So one may say something and one doesn't think it's a big deal, but that word will please Allah. And it will be such a pleasure that because of that, Allah will raise him to degrees of rewards. And a slave of Allah may utter a word carelessly, which displeases Allah without thinking much about it, right? And this word is displeasing Allah. And what happens is because of this, he is thrown into the hellfire. So this is the power of words, my brothers and sisters. And finally, look, what we know is that your words are your own possessions. They are your captives. They are your slave as long as you don't speak them. But when they are out, they own you, right? And right now, actually, these days, we are seeing a lot of that, right? I mean, you see a lot of people on Twitter, even like people who are leaders of nation. They are on Twitter, on social media. They are saying things. They're being ridiculed and mocked about it, and they're being hold, held accountable for it. So just take a look at the importance of the words. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in his book, in his pure speech, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, مَا يَلْفِظُ مِنْ قَوْلٍ إِلَّا لَدَيْهِ رَقِيبٌ عَتِيدٌ not a word does he or she utter, but there is a watcher by him ready to record it. Many people stay away from several forms of haram, prohibited actions, but they do not pay attention to their tongue. How much does it elevate or destroy relationship with Allah, with your family, with your clients, and so on? <laughs> Da 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 da